Make sure you tune in to the Sentinel High School Video Art Show during the Sentinel High School Hour. Tuesday, March 21st at 7 p.m. and again on Thursday, March 23rd at 5 p.m. You don't want to miss out on the extremely talented Sentinel High School Hour right here on MCAT. <laughs>
construction, the Larkin Administration Building of 1903, which only survives in this film taken by Mike himself and a few dozen photographs. The Larkin Company of Buffalo, New York, wants this mail uh, serving them.
Take your time. No! Let him die! Yeah, yeah. you! Does it? Hold <laughs> How do you go about Mexican? Send the space back where they belong. Hey, I'm ready to pick your suit. How do you go about dead. lesbian? I hate the bad guys. These are all terms we hey, use for each other. Yeah, but what we all yeah. are as humans, the question I want to ask is why can't we treat each other like humans? Well, to me. Dreams I walk with you. Oh, yeah, Seems I talk Did you stop to it? Yeah. Envisioning total corruption Wait. and systematic destruction. No. You just need to live the one day at a time. <laughs> 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 think one the Supposedly, we think it's one. Even though the thinking is all the act of scar victims of history and to me are nothing but a mystery. I wasn't born but shit into existence without existence. The pieces are falling into place, the pictures are coming clear, the reflecting the image are now in the looking mirror. But I don't want to go among mad people, Alice remarked. Well, you can't help that, said the cat. We're all mad here. I'm mad, you're mad. How do you know I'm mad? Must be silly cat. Oh, yeah. And this race is for someone to say. Look at you, if you like, see us in the evening. You just have to sit back and observe. You need to sell back. Lay it on the pavement, blood shot in all directions. And all the worms crawl in the directions. Spread on the ground like a broken jar of mayonnaise. I glance at him utterly amazed. What's this world coming to? I shouted aloud as I leaned against the wall. All was beaten to death by the crowd. Oh, just sounds that way. <laughs> um, that's the end. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs>
This story is by Gary Truax Jr. The annual Youth Job Fair is back. The Youth Job Fair will be held in the Sentinel Gymnasium on April 26, 1995. If you are looking for a job, this is a great opportunity. There is expected to be about 100 local businesses at the job fair. There should be most of the fast food places, grocery stores, department stores, and other local businesses attending. The fair is sponsored by the Missoula Job Service, Missoula Employers Committee, and high school counselors. There is no charge to attend this event, so if you would like to attend the job fair or have any questions, contact your school counselor. This is a great opportunity for employment, so make sure to contact your school counselor. Stories by Jamie Cooney, Capital Punishment. In the 1990s, 36 states had laws that allowed the death penalty. These laws were greatly influenced by a 1972 decision of the Supreme Court, which banned the death penalty as it was then imposed. The court ruled that the imposition and carrying out of the death penalty was cruel and unusual punishment in violation of the 8th and 14th Amendments. After the 1972 decision, many state legislatures passed new capital punishment laws designed to satisfy the Supreme Court requirements. These laws limit the death penalty to murder and to other specified crimes that result in a person's death. Such crimes include armed robbery, hijacking, and kidnapping. The laws of several states specify the circumstances under which a job the laws of several states specify the circumstances under which a judge or jury may impose the death penalty. By Jody Sullivan. For more than 2,000 years, the Latin language has been a principal language in the world. However, with the fall of the Roman Empire in 1476 AD, Latin has been progressively less by people. Sentinel High School is no exception, and that is evident in the enrollment of classes. Currently, there are nine students in Latin I and six students in Latin II at Sentinel. This is compared to 15 in Latin I and 12 in Latin II during the 1989-1990 school year. So, what is, the respons what is responsible for this decline? Sentinel Latin teacher Cindy Braun spe speculates that students think it's hard and are thus reluctant to study the language. However, on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, Braun rates Latin as a 6. Furthermore, students don't see an immediate relevance, and they feel that Latin is useless because a person can't go anywhere in the world and speak the ancient language. Scheduling, too, can be a problem formally. For many. For many. Just cut that. <laughs> the importance of Latin lies within its depths. Though Latin may not be used extensively, studying it can improve one's vocabulary and grammar since 65% of English words are derived from Latin. Moreover, while it builds an appreciation of history and ancient culture, the study of Latin promotes thinking, problem solving, analysis, and memorization. So, one might ask, why take Latin? If not for the mental discipline, keep in mind that Latin students often get chocolate cheesecake and Oreos. <laughs> Sentinel parking lot to be redesigned. During an interview with Mr. Zinni on March 9, 1995, the student parking at Sentinel was discussed. Sentinel's principal believes that our school has plenty of parking, but it is just not properly used. The administration has considered building a new lot, but decided that the money could be spent better somewhere else. Football, haha. -ha. Am I supposed to say that? No, that was just a little funny joke that I wrote. Why'd you put it in there then? Just say it. Um, foot football. football, ha ha. Okay. This is why the drafting two class um, has redesigned our current parking lot. They have narrowed the spaces, therefore adding approximately 70 more spaces to be painted in with money already set aside. Zinni also suggests that students park further down Bancroft on the Sentinel side. This would require a small walk, but after what Zinni said, we as Montanans think we have to park right in front wherever we're going. Parking at Sentinel is definitely in for a change. March 7th, the business lab found a new hobby, linking up NASA's cyberspace program. This program allows internet members to see America's astronauts on the Endeavour spacecraft while they're in space. People from all around the world have linked into this program and enjoyed the pictures and information the internet program provides. This is the first time the internet has been linked with NASA, providing virtual reality shots. The only way a computer can link up to the Astro 2 program is with a modem. Recently, the business lab was, business lab was blessed with new equipment, part of which was a new modem. After seeing an article in the Missoulian on Sunday, March 6, Mrs. Prince decided linking up would be a good project for her students. So on the following Monday, after several tries, the lab linked up with the NASA program, which was already in its fifth day. This was the first real program the lab had gotten into, and Mrs. Prince was glad it was so su successful. Sarah Tolson. This year, Sentinel High School has introduced its PE program to new activities. 
Tumbling is very effective and great to do. Mr. Owens explains, quad ball is new this year. Students enjoy this and feel that it's great. Mrs. Nash explains, it's fun for the students to dunk when able and work as a team. Thanks. Planned Parenthood is a nonprofit reproductive health care center that offers education, advocacy, and services. Some of the services they provide are pap smears, pelvic and breast exams, birth control information, and supplies pregnancy tests and counseling, HIV tests and abortions, and many other services. All the services they provide are on a sliding fee basis. A person's fee is based on income. When they find out what a person, person's income is, they assign that person a pay category. Out of all the patients that go to Planned Parenthood, 86% of them are on a sliding fee. Deborah Franson, the executive director of Planned Parenthood, said that most of the patients that come in are at a poverty level or below. The average patient they get is a single 20 to 24 year old woman with one child that receives some kind of government assistance but doesn't qualify for welfare. In 1994, Planned Parenthood had 4,849 unduplicated patients. 54 of those patients were 14 and under, and 601 of those patients were 15 to 17, and the rest were ages 18 to 65. Altogether, Planned Parenthood had 8,152 visits to the clinic from patients. Out of these 8,152 visits, 4,496 were sexually transmitted disease counseling sessions. 3,463 visits were for pap smears, 1,495 were for chlamydia tests, and 910 were pregnancy tests. Franson says that the most common method of birth control is the birth control most used is condoms. Franston said that the Missoula County High Schools have a great deal of sexual education, but that students usually are informed too late. They also don't get enough education because they don't teach it for a long enough time. Planned Parenthood provides a teen class every Wednesday afternoon at 4 o'clock. It is an anonymous class that has answers for any questions anybody has. For instance, says there are many challenges Planned Parenthood has to face in the future. Government grants called Title X is in jeopardy in Washington, D.C. Title X is the money provided by the government that allows them to run the clinic on a sliding fee basis. The money that is provided is going to be cut back. For instance, said this is a very bad thing because last year Planned Parenthood prevented 2,085 unplanned pregnancies in 1992. If every year they were to prevent 2,000 unplanned births, they would save the government millions of dollars. They saved the state of Montana $8 million last year alone. Bloom. They slime over the ground but are considered a delicacy by some escargot. On Sunday, March 12th, the Sentinel French Club tried this dish at Jeannie Bloom's house. Feelings were very mixed. For Kyle Osley, he had to psych himself for 10 minutes before he popped the food in his mouth and decided it wasn't his thing. But the others bravely ate, demeaning, deeming the dish less than poisonous. Accompanying the escargot was a cheese fondue, French bread, and vegetables. For dessert, there was a chocolate fondue and fruit crepes. French cookies of Normandy, plus pie and cake. The group played charades in French and watched a form film entitled Three Men in a Cradle. After a pleasant evening, the party dispersed but they will never forget the party of snails. April Spear. A public service commission hearing was held in Missoula on March 15th to receive response on the Missoula bound caller ID telephone feature. At the hearing, two people testified against the feature and five people testified for it. Caller ID in Missoula will be brought by US West in April. US West predicts that more than 230,000 phone lines would be able to gain the service. However, the national average of people signing up for a caller ID when it is available is only 10 to 15 percent. Caller ID would cost $595. Oh God, not that much. Caller ID would cost $5.95 per month per phone for a name and number of the person calling, and $4.45 per month for just a number. The people testifying for caller ID use much of the same argument. They said that they would have in the past re received obscene or prank phone calls. If they were to receive them again, they would know who it was that was calling them. They would also know if a business was calling or just a friend. Another of caller ID's function is that by pushing some buttons, you can put on an automatic trace on a phone call for just $1.55. You wouldn't know who it was, but a complaint would show up at the police station and an officer would go to the house the obscene phone call came from. Arguments against caller ID were from people who didn't want to give their phone number out every time they made a phone call. They were afraid that if they called a business, the business would get their phone number, call them, and try to sell them things. However, a person can block an individual call by simply dialing asterisk 67 before the phone number at no charge, with or without caller ID. Also, a permanent block can be put on a phone line for no initial charge by U.S. West. 
PTI already offers caller ID, and they have one additional feature that through US West we wouldn't get. On their system, people who use caller ID can also have an automatic block put on their phone to block calls from other blocked phones. The phone wouldn't even ring. If someone was pranking you from a blocked phone line, you could block that call, your phone wouldn't even ring, possibly in the middle of the night. Missoula interest in caller ID was not shown at the hearing. Of the 12 people who attended, three were from neighboring phone companies. Seven people testified for or against it, and the last two simply listened and asked questions they might have. Katie Trepang, March 13th through the 15th, tryouts were held for the junior varsity and varsity softball teams. There were 44 girls there to fill between 26 and 30 positions. The girls were evaluated, evaluated on many things, one of which was hitting. They were pitched 12 balls, 10 to hit, and two to bunt. The coaches, Burkhart, Nesser, and Henkel, hit pot flies and grounders to test the girls' skills. There were so many girls at tryout that the coaches split the girls into two groups. After practice on Monday, the coaches discussed that players until about, oh, <clears throat> after practice on Monday, the coaches discussed the players until about nine o'clock that night. On Wednesday, the girls were informed if they made the first cut. The coaches told each girl individually what they needed to improve on, even if they made the team. The coaches made their decisions and congratulations to the 1994 junior varsity and varsity softball teams. Oh. The coaches made their decisions and congratulations to the 1994 1990 oh, do it right. The coaches made their okay. The coaches made their decisions and congratulations to the 1994-1995 varsity and junior varsity softball teams. Finish it off. I hope you enjoyed our journalism one show from Sentinel High School. And I'm Kelly Wynn signing off. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> big nerd, big nerd. This is a juried art show that took place March 3rd at the University of Montana. These are some of the various pieces that were shown at this display.
Come on, class. Sit down. Today, class, we will be studying the Civil War. The Civil War. The Great Civil War. What we need to find out today is who we fought and why we fought this Great Civil War. Uh, uh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, uh, Dan, we, we uh, fought uh, Vietnam, Vietnam, yeah. No, Dan, no, Dan. We didn't fight Vietnam. Then shut up. Where have you been? We had to use the laboratory. Oh, that's okay. Well, it's a good thing you're here, Catherine. Because you know what, Catherine? Today we are going to study the Civil War. And what I would like to know, what this class needs to know is why we fought the Civil War and with whom. Well, the Southern states left the Union and we fought the South. It was an economic battle. Thank you, Catherine. That was very good and that was correct. Let's take a flashback here, folks. The year 1863. North versus South, the Civil War. In 1863, alone in the famous Battle of Gettysburg, thousands were killed on both sides. Thousands. It was a bloody, bloody battle. Now, have you heard of Frederick Douglass? Perhaps you've heard of... Okay, who broke my pencil? Who broke my pencil? Who broke my pencil? We're not going to continue this class until I find out. OK, I'm going to leave. And when I come back, I better find out who broke my pencil, or this whole class is going to be in trouble. The whole class. You did it, Dan. Did what? Fought in the Civil War? No, you idiot. You broke Mr. Peabody's pencil. Okay. Who broke my pencil? Dan. Okay. Now we can continue with our class discussion. Uh, Mr. Peabody, where's Vietnam? Dan, we are not talking about Vietnam. The Civil War didn't occur in Vietnam. Well, Cody said I fought in the Civil War, and I don't remember fighting. There's a good reason, Dan. You weren't in the Civil Excuse me. You weren't in the Vietnam War. Well, hello, Catherine. How's my favorite student today? Not so good. I've got two big problems. Well, would you care to talk about them before the rest of the class gets here? Well. Dan asked me, asked me out and... Oh. My poor child. He's the only person in class who can't spell his own name. Do you know yesterday, he asked me if he was in Genghis Khan's army? Well, it's not Dan that bothers me so much. Well, I guess, sort of. He didn't break your pencil. I did. Why? I don't know. Sorry. I guess I deserve some detention. I don't know.
from JLD News Center. We are here at Sentinel High School and we are going to be going into a real live classroom where there's a substitute teacher and we're going to see how the kids are acting. <laughs> Substitute, if I could just get your attention for a minute. Yeah, you will. Be a This is Deja Richardson reporting for JLD News Center. We're here today at Sentinel High School talking to Dave Severson. Hi, Dave. How are you Hi, today? Deirdre. Good. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a few, t a few questions about substitute teaching. Do you feel that substitute teaching is good for the teachers? Um, for the teachers or the students? For both. For both? Well, it's not the ideal situation, but sometimes the teacher does have to be away from their classroom, and it isn't as as good of a situation when the regular teacher's not there. Do you have to change your agenda for the day when a substitute teacher comes in? Sometimes. It happens. Great deal. All right. Um, do you feel that um, when you were a substitute, when you were a student teacher, excuse me, do you feel the teachers, how did the students t treat you? Uh, it was pretty difficult. The students test you quite a bit. Uh, but that's part of uh, being a student teacher. You have to learn to handle those situations. And I think I did all, all right with that. Was there ever a time in your teaching when you were ready to just get up at the classroom and leave? Sometimes, but you just have to resist that uh, urge to do that and carry on. All right, well, thank you for your time. Sure. We're here with Mr. Straub today. We just wanted to ask him a few questions on substitute teaching. Mr. Straub, do you feel like a regular teacher after having substituted for such a long period of time? Uh, I've been teaching for about 20 years and sometimes as a substitute and sometimes in my own classroom and I don't feel much different. I'm here to teach, not to babysit. Mm -hmm. so, so I teach the same way all the time or, or feel the same way about teaching all the time. All right. Um, do you teach your own style or do you try to adapt to the teacher's style that you're substituting for? I, we each have our own style and uh, our own methods. I try and go as far uh, to the end of my methods as I can to be as much like the teacher that, uh, that as the regular classroom, but I still have to be me. Would you rather be a full-time student, a full-time teacher, or would you, do you prefer substitute teaching? I'd like to have my own classroom again. You would. I well, would but I do enjoy substituting. I, I've learned a lot substituting. I've had such a variety of uh, experiences. Well, thank you for your time. Hi, this is Jennifer Parker reporting from JLD News Center, and we're here at Sentinel High School talking to Mr. Curran. Hi. And we're going to be interviewing him on being a substitute teacher. Okay. Do you feel that students treat you differently, that you're a substitute teacher? Well, actually, there's an advantage in being at the same school quite often, that they get to know you and you get to know the students, so they behave much better than if you're at one school for one day and you're not there for a long time. I've been at Sentinel for, Sentinel for quite a while, and I substituted in different classes here at Sentinel, so I don't have too much trouble. Do you feel that it's going to be hard when you, um, when you stop substitute teaching for such a long period of time and then going back to just one, one day substitute teaching? Do you feel that you'll still be, feel the same? Sometimes. If you go to a third grade class, they're usually pretty good no matter what. <laughs> If uh, you go to a high school you've never been to before and you're there for one day, it can be a little wild at times, but not often, not too often. And I, intend, I, I substitute so many times, and there's only three schools in Missoula, so I get to know 
a lot of kids at a lot of different schools. Do you, what do you enjoy best about substitute teaching? The kids. The kids are a lot of fun, and it's enjoyable working with them. Okay, well, thank you for talking to us. Back to you. I want everybody in town and everywhere to make me feel like I'm part of it. Part community, part family. I want people to love me and care for me a lot. I like to go for walks, go hiking. Respect us, encourage us, and enjoy friendships with us. We add richness to the lives of those who know us.